Well, it's an endless argument. What do you terminate game with better? A big heavy bullet or a light super fast bullet? Well, we're going to see if we can't figure it out on this episode of Ron Spomer Outdoors. Well, it's an endless argument because we're always arguing it. It's been going on since the days of the 70 caliber muzzle loaders. And of course, as we got faster with smokeless powder, we were able to drive bullets much, much faster. And that seemed to kill better than some of the bigger bullets. But the big advantage with the speed was you could reach your critter. And this is a mistake that a lot of folks make about magnums. They think it's all about power. You get a magnum and you're gonna kill them bigger, faster, and harder. Not necessarily. You're going to reach them a little more easily. That's what velocity and lighter bullets does for us. It lets us get down range farther. And that made a big, big change in how effective hunters could be in the field in the 20th century. These days, we're starting to go the other direction again and getting a little bit slower velocities because we don't like big recoil. And that's another argument against big bullets and big cartridges. So let's just discuss all of that. Before I do, I do want to thank our patrons on Patreon for supporting us. It really helps, guys. We really appreciate it. And give us a thumbs up if you can here and subscribe to the channel. That always helps keep us on the air, too. Um, if you want to see our podcast, we have another YouTube channel called RSO Podcast. And of course, you can catch those as podcasts on your favorite podcatcher. Now let's dive into this heavy bullet versus light bullet. The basic idea with heavy bullets, of course, is that heavy hurts. <laughs> I mean, drop a bowling ball on your foot and a tennis ball and what do you think is going to hurt more? But there's velocity involved in this program too. Now, if you just Gently set a tennis ball on your foot, not going to hurt at all. Gently set a bowling ball on your foot, probably not going to hurt at all. But gently set an anvil on your foot, yikes, there's pressure there. This is where mass and gravity work together. Gravity is pulling everything the same. 32 feet per second accelerating at 32 feet per second is what it does. So the heavier or more massive the object, the more weight it has to press down on you, whether it is moving or not. But if you get that tennis ball going about 40,000 miles an hour, it's got some ability to kill you. <laughs> but if you're thinking what I'm thinking, a tennis ball compresses, that introduces a whole other aspect of this bullet shooting thing. It's not just mass. It's construction, materials, length, um, diameter, all these things play a role. So. 4570 flat nose bullets, 400, 500 grains, that's going to hurt at any velocity. You launch that at around 2100 to 2200 feet per second, you've got yourself an elephant cartridge. But of course, we know that Bell in Africa, Karamojo Bell, shot 800 elephants with a 173 grain bullet out of a 7 millimeter Mauser. That's a little bit slower than a 7 millimeter 08. Remington, which a lot of people think is a little bit too small for deer hunting. <laughs> I don't think so, guys. But Bell was using the right kind of bullet. He didn't have all that much velocity, and he obviously didn't have much weight. But he had precision shot placement, and that's the key to all of this. Put the right bullet in the right place, and it doesn't matter if it weighs 500 grains or 50 grains. I once saw an individual take a 243 with a 55 grain varmint bullet on it. Thin skin, soft lead core, explosive varmint bullet. And he shot a big nasty old zebra in the neck and killed it instantly. <laughs> that is a tiny little bullet that's not supposed to do the job. It's supposed to explode on the surface and not even get in. It drilled a little hole right into the spine and then went to pieces and broke the spine, hit the central nervous system, end of the zebra. Does that mean that now the 243 with a 55 grain bullet is your optimum bullet for hunting zebra? Oh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> it just goes to show that can be done. So here's the argument. In addition to just a lot of mass and weight in a big bullet, it's caliber size. A lot of guys say big caliber. This is a 41 caliber right here. Look at how big in diameter it is. Guys will say that's way better than a narrow little point on a smaller bullet like this 30 caliber or that 24 caliber. I mean, look at the difference. So obviously, 
the big guy is going to make a bigger hole. It's going to let more blood out. It's going to do more damage. It's going to kill more quickly. But we're forgetting something else about this bullet. Look at how short that thing is. Now compare that to this longer one. Is that going to make a difference? I think it will. And here's why. Sectional density. Sectional density is the cross-sectional density of that bullet. And what it tells us is predicts that if everything else about the bullet is the same, same materials, same basic construction, the one that's longer is going to have a higher SD, meaning it's going to keep more weight in its shank to continue its momentum driving forward. Whereas this guy, he's not a lot longer than he is wide, so he's going to stop more quickly once he gets friction. Once he starts inside that animal, hits a lot of resistance, it's going to slow down. Whereas this one maintains drive behind it. And here's some finished bullet examples. Let's just measure this guy up, make sure I've got the right bullet. I'm pretty sure it's a 41. It's a 45, okay? Comes for this one is a 185 grain bullet designed for the 45 ACP uh, handgun. Automatic Colt Pistol 45. All right, so you've got 45 caliber hole to start with. Now this uh, this is a seven millimeter bullet right here. Look at how tiny that thing is. 0.284, yep, there we go. So look at your difference. Wow, this guy should be a lot more effective. Bigger hole, right? Well, let's see what happens after that bullet lands. Now let's just see what the difference is in the diameter. The expanded point on this little seven millimeter, this 284, is now 50. It's wider than the 45. And look what it has behind it, a good lot of shank to continue pushing through. Whereas this guy, this 45, can end up looking like this. Wow, really wide, but no shank. Everything flattened out, got all ripped, tumbled together like this. And that's what can sometimes happen with your bigger, wider, but shorter bullets. Now, if you combine length, mass, and expansion, look what you get. <laughs> Does this thing look like it'll penetrate? I pulled this out of a Cape Buffalo shot with a 458 lot. And we got good expansion, not over expansion, and a lot of weight in the shank to continue driving forward. That's what makes a difference. So you've got a combination of expansion to create more wounding and then good shank and weight behind to can you continue driving deeper. So you have the best of both worlds. You're damaging those organs laterally and longitudinally through the animal. And then whether you come out the other side or not, doesn't matter a heck of a lot. We've got two arguments on that one too. We can probably cover that in another episode. But the upshot is velocity ties together with bullet construction to get expansion and allows smaller, lighter bullets traveling really, really fast to be as effective as big, heavy bullets traveling rather slowly. And sometimes, oftentimes, more effective. And that is where you get into your arguments about hydrostatic shock and how quickly a bullet can kill when it's going really, really fast. Here is one absolute truth about mass and velocity. And this is Newtonian physics. If you double the mass of an object, you double its energy at any velocity. So drop it on your toe. If it's twice as heavy, it's going <laughs> to hurt twice as much. But if you double its velocity, you quadruple the energy that it's carrying. Kinetic energy, energy in motion. So there's an advantage in going faster and carrying more energy if you have the right bullet construction to hang together when you get there, do the expansion, maintain that shank, and continue your momentum. This is the big deal with bigger bullets at slower velocities. They don't expand as much as the high velocity ones because there's just not that much energy when they hit, but they've got mass in the shank to continue driving forward. So I think it's pretty obvious that our bullet manufacturers are looking for a compromise on all of this. Obviously, for the bigger animals, a bigger hole means you're going to damage more tissue and probably kill them much more quickly or effectively or reliably. Whereas with the frangible bullets, you might not damage as much if the bullet doesn't stay together and reach those vital organs. But you will be able to put that bullet on your target out there at 200 yards, 300 yards, 400 yards. A lot better if it's a sleek bullet with a high ballistics coefficient and a lot of muzzle velocity. That's what magnums are good for, reaching your target more easily. So those are kind of my points on 
bullet weight versus velocity. You know, the whether or not your critter shot with a 3378 Weatherby Magnum <laughs> or a 3030, I really don't think there's going to be any difference in the killing effect. It's just that this one's going to get there sooner. It's going to reach a lot further than the 3030, but as most people know, the 3030 is such a dependable, reliable deer slayer that you really don't need all this extra velocity if you're hunting inside of, say, 200 yards, the range of that bullet. Those are, I think, more considered, a, what you need to consider more about a cartridge in a bullet than pure, pure mass of the bullet and pure velocity. So think about all of it. That's the important part. Both sides have good arguments. Big, heavy bullets can work, even if they're going quite slowly. Light, fast bullets can work, even if they're going too fast. <laughs> but balance it all out, and obviously you come up with bullets and cartridges that work very well, or we wouldn't still have them. The reason we have a lot of fast 22 calibers and slow 50 calibers is because both ends of that scale work. And then there's a real bunch of nice cartridges in the middle ground. So choose wisely, choose carefully, um, hunt honestly, and shoot straight. Mm -hmm.